Hey everybody, it's Little Yellow Yarn here with me, Deborah Lee. Today I want to show you guys something super exciting. We're actually going to be using our Ultra Punch Needle, woohoo, to do needle punch embroidery. So I'm going to get started by introducing you guys to the materials I have here and then we'll get going. So I have of course my number 25 floss, that is six strand floss. I've got a couple of colors. You use whatever colors you'd like. Um, I am using JMP Coats brand. You can use any brand you'd like. I've got my nice little Fiskar scissors. I love these guys, super sharp. I have my threader. Okay. And of course, I have my Ultra Punch needle. And I have equipped this guy with my medium sized needle. Okay. And that is to fit. The size 25 floss it'll work perfectly with it all right along with those I do have a 7 inch hoop okay yes I love the clover brand if you guys use a different brand that works awesome for your needle punch projects go ahead and drop a comment below I'd love to see what brands you guys are using and hey I might even give them a try myself I am still looking for the perfect hoop for needle punching um, haven't found it yet so Gotta keep on looking. If you guys know of one, awesome, let me know below. And finally, I have my weaver's cloth. Now, weaver's cloth, it's a nice, thick material. You can see that there's literally no give. I don't know if you guys can tell. Yeah, you can see how the material is put together. It's almost crossed on itself, and it makes it very durable and very, very, very strong especially when you're needle punching. I have used other materials and yeah, they work okay, but they don't hold up too well. They, they're flimsy, especially if it's like an all cotton. So I've done previous projects on all cotton material and they came out nice, but I would have liked that durability that the weaver's cloth or like a nice linen would give. And if you guys are curious as to what I've created before, go ahead and drop down in the description below and you'll see my Instagram ID and it's at little yellow yarn. <laughs> Got tongue tied there. At little yellow yarn. And I'd love to follow you guys, see what y'all are up to. Go ahead and follow me and you'll see what I'm up to as well. And it'd be awesome to connect with you guys. So let's get started here. I have drawn my picture and it says sweet and I've got some strawberries and some little strawberry blossoms. You guys are more than welcome to use my pattern and this is something I just put together on a whim. I will say if you love to draw, awesome, go ahead and doodle your favorite doodle on your weaver's cloth. I would recommend using the pencil. I personally like to use these pencils, don't ask me to pronounce it, <laughs> but just because they're um, the lead's dark and the eraser is nice to use. Um, you can use any other kind of um, pen or pencil that you'd like, but always keep in mind that whenever you are drawing, you're going to want to have it backwards because you can see I had started on the strawberry. This is actually going to be the wrong side, the part that you start punching on. You get this nice smooth texture here, okay? And the part that's going to be the right side is going to be your loops. Cool, huh? It'll ultimately look kind of like a rug when we're done. Alright, so always remember, um, draw your picture backwards, or if you're like me, you can draw it correctly, like I did here, and I simply traced it onto the back. I just laid it down and I would trace over the picture. That works too. And if for any reason you guys are like, oh my gosh, I can't draw, or that's not for me, that's, that's fine, no worries at all. You can always go online and check out some public domain images, or grab your kid's um, coloring book and check out the pictures in there and you can trace it. But always keep in mind that it's going to be backwards. So that way you can do it properly and have your loops on the right side. Sorry, there you go, the loops on the right side. All right guys, so let's giddy on up. The way I drew mine too, some, a little tip for you guys, I get the inner part of the hoop and I just trace around it and that lets me know, okay, hey, here's my seven inches in diameter. You can also bust out your ruler, that's fine too. Totally up to you guys. All right, now my inner hoop has a lip. All right, I always want that lip to be facing up. All right, 
So I'm going to put that guy down. I put my weaver's cloth on top of it. Again, the image is going to be backwards. Okay. I'm going to get the outer part of the hoop. Make sure it's wider than that inner part. And I'm going to fit it over it. Fit it like so. And you start to tighten the hardware. Now I love these clover hoops because the hardware is so simple to use. I don't hurt my fingers tightening it. So if you guys are curious about using it, I would recommend it. And as you're tightening it, you want to go around and pull your material out. You don't want any bumps or lumps or anything like that on your work surface. You want it to be nice and smooth and drum tight. Or as I say, snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> I just remember that growing up. I forgot which teacher introduced that to us. It was early elementary. And now your hardware, you're going to start to feel some resistance. Go ahead and keep tightening it until it stops. But you don't want to tighten it, like force it, you know. Just give it a snug twist. Alright, so you want to hear that, that drum sound, okay? So now that is set let's go ahead and load our punch needle if you guys are not familiar with how to thread it I'm gonna go ahead and provide a link up in the top so that way you guys can watch that short video and you can know how to thread your punch needle so I have used the two setting before and it brings out the needle slightly I'm gonna go ahead and jump to a four setting you can do whichever setting you'd like okay I would say for beginners use a two or a three or a four okay the one might be a little tricky you can practice on that it's totally up to you though give it a go on all the different settings i mean eventually it's going to come so naturally to you nothing's going to phase you trust me you're going to be a pro that's for sure and remember whenever you go to thread it's a two-step process always remember that two steps right and you'll get quicker as you go just always be wary of how sharp that needle is that guy can poke you and leave you crying <laughs> oh yes I do know what it feels like unfortunately all right and you want to leave a little tail there at the end all right so we're good to go I have put my camera closer now, you notice that I started to punch around here. It's the smooth side. This is the side I want to continue working on because I want my strawberries to have those cute little loops on the front. All right. So what you do is you're literally coloring with your needle, okay? You're just going to keep going around and around and around and around and around until it's all filled in. Okay, so here we go. The trick is you're going to punch, and I'm punching as close to that row I finished on as possible. Watch your fingers. Punch it, all right, you hear that punch? Flip it over, and you're going to see that your needles come through, and you want to be very careful and grab that yarn, or that floss, I'm used to saying yarn, and pull it on out. You're gonna leave a tail back there, okay? You can see my little bristly tail that I did initially, that guy. You can snip him lower later, but for now I'd leave a nice little piece of tail there. Now flip back over to the, in this case, the wrong side, right? We're working on the wrong side. And we're going to, since we punched, now we're going to lift and we're going to slide. So punch, and you're not going to lift your punch needle above the hoop or the material, you're literally gonna hover over it, okay? And before we continue, you always want to hold your punch needle like a pen with your thumb, the numbers, and the little nub all lined up with the bezel of the needle, okay? So they should all line up. Check it before you start to do your needle punching. That's a good tip. So we punched, we're going to lift, it's all facing you, and we're going to slide and punch, lift, 
slide, punch, lift, don't bring it up, just hover over it and slide. All right, again, watch your fingers from behind, punch, lift, slide. And you're going to want to get as close to those previous rows as possible. Do not punch into them. Instead, punch right next to them, okay? That's a mistake I've made at the beginning of my needle punching career. <laughs> it makes a mess in the front. So punch, lift, slide. You're sliding it the width of the needle, okay? Punch, lift, slide. And you're literally doing this all the way around, all the way around until you have got your entire strawberry or picture filled in with the color you want, okay? And I will say your hand is going to cramp at the beginning. You're going to wonder why the heck you're so sore. And it's because you're using muscles you haven't used before, most likely. Alright. And sorry, I didn't put that guy on a bobbin. But if you guys ever want to unwind, huh? yes, pun intended, go ahead and grab yourself some bobbins. They're not expensive. I'd say like two bucks for a pack of 28 to 50. It just depends what brand you're buying. Um, so probably between two and four bucks. And go ahead and unwind all of your skeins of floss and wind them up on a bobbin. It's much easier to work that way. So punch, lift, slide, punch, lift, slide, punch, lift, slide, all the way around. Now we'll finish up this guy and then I'll show you what the front is starting to look like. And one thing I wanted to mention was you can mix and match. Let's say like you wanted the front side to also have some of the smooth part. You could definitely flip-flop and flip-flop the weaver's cloth, right? And you could go ahead and have this smooth side on the front and vice versa. Um, one thing I've recently done is incorporated actual hand embroidery into my punch needlework, which was really cool. So there's another option for you too. I have seen so many different variations of needle punch work. I've seen some where people actually will crochet off of the hoop. It just, it looks so gorgeous. Something that I definitely want to try one day. And they also will knit off of there. Just, it looks so cool. It literally looks like the image is coming to life. That's what it is. Alright, so now I have finished my round and in this case, let's just say I was done with my strawberry, right? This is how you're going to take your pin out and hold your floss down. Very carefully, get your thumb and you're going to put it right on the spot where you end. Just right on top, snugly push down. At an angle, lift your pin out. Be very gentle and you're going to hold that floss while you're pulling out. Okay, you don't want to bring the loops back out of your work. All right, and then at that point, you're going to grab your scissors. Let's see if I can move this over. There's a lot going on here in this little space. <laughs> grab your scissors, and you're going to cut as close to the bottom of your work as possible. All right, and that's it. All right, so this is going to be your nice smooth side. This is the wrong side. This is going to be your fluffy side. Pretty cool, huh guys? And now it will take practice. I know when I first started, my lines were crooked and going everywhere and all sorts of directions. Um, keep practicing like anything else. You'll get there. You guys are going to be awesome. I know it. You are awesome. And if you're wondering what I just did, I just snipped off the little tails. Okay, I didn't snip the loops. I snipped off my little tails. So that way they could be flush with everything else. All right, guys. So that completes the tutorial on how to do needle punch work. So excited for you guys. 
definitely share your work. Again, follow me on Instagram at Little Yellow Yarn. And definitely subscribe to my channel, guys. It's free, so go ahead and do that. Click that notification bell. And I hope to see you guys soon. You all have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.